<sighs> I have spent hours working on this, trying to figure this out. And I've gone through tutorials and things and nobody had specifically what I wanted, which was um, using Garretton's Aria player for big band and jazz in Cakewalk and trying to get it all set up. I've seen some other DAWs and stuff, but they didn't, they didn't quite get what I was looking for. So this is going into this. I hope I can save you some time if you're just new to MIDI and stuff like me. Um, I got it to the point where, like, normally I have an instrument that I bring in, such as these strings. I just drag and drop them in there. I usually would say, simple instrument, okay. That was my standard process. You hit record, and when you, uh, you know, when you play it, I had my keyboard running through the computer on a MIDI thing, and it was just pretty standard. What I was trying to do, so I had that principle in my head, so I'd take Aria Player, simple instrument track, that's what I was doing before, and it was, it was sort of working, it was almost working. I could take my jab, standard trumpets, whatever, open, and I'd put it in my track one here, I could get that to play. All right, but... I would try to put another instrument in and it wouldn't work so I'd bring in the cut me one. It would only play the uh, first one. It was very baffling. No matter what I did, I couldn't get these to work. What I've learned is each MIDI, uh, MIDI comes standard with 16 channels and you can set each channel to do different things. I didn't know that. I, I mean, I, I'd read that and stuff, but I, I hadn't really, like, locked it into my brain or gotten myself to understand what that means or what you can do with it. Now I know, after much experimentation, you take the area player multi-track, you drop it in here. If I uncheck simple instrument and I switch to instrument track per output, right, and then I see there's 16 here, 16 tracks, it brings them all in, here they are. These can be my different instruments, and I was so happy to find this because then I can use my ensemble to load in all these presets, and it works. It was, it was beautiful. Uh, once they're all loaded, so number one, now this is the part I had to figure out. One, two, three, four is not one, two, three, four. It's based on these numbers on the side here. So f this number one is actually number four, which is number four right here. So this is playing my alto sax right now. And I could change that if I wanted to, but for, for this example, I'm not going to. Let's say I want to use my fretless bass over here. That's number one. So I'm going to click on number one. There's my fretless bass, number one. Okay, good. So, um... I thought, well, how does how do these tracks know what they are if it's not based on the order that they're lined up in and it's not based on uh, <clears throat> the input? Because I thought maybe it would be like USB MIDI and then you pick your channel, but no, it's... And so I finally went down to MIDI and I found it here in here's the channel. This is how you assign them. So this is number one. This is number two. This one's set for number six, and you can change that there too. So now, whichever one I play and record with is going to be assigned to the, each individual instrument according to their number. It's brilliant! Anyway, that's what I've come to find out. That's how you set this up. You can rename them as you want. Um, but And then obviously if you learn about um, the, the jazz and big band pl plugin, you can figure out how to save your own customizations and load them that way and stuff. But I finally got this to work. I'm very happy. And if I've saved you some time as well, uh, well, I hope I did because this was stressful. <laughs>